This is a complement to the discussion of the metaphysics of Pepe the Frog that I had with Dr. Jordan Peterson. There are strange transformations happening in our world, and hopefully understanding them will prevent the worst from taking shape. As I discussed with Dr. Peterson, the frog is a type of hybridity. As an amphibian, it exists in two worlds at the same time, so it becomes an image of the margin. Another possible aspect of the margin and the monster as we encounter it is to be a shapeshifter. Shapeshifting, shape like hybridity, is the sign of the place where categories fall apart on the edge. In the case of shapeshifting, this char characteristic is presented mostly as a power of the margin. It's the power of fluidity, like a trickster taking on several forms to operate his mischief. To fully understand how Pepe the Frog operates, we need to understand how shape-shifting occurs and how it gives power to those who wield it. You see, Pepe has become a meme, possibly the most used meme of all times. His image is floating on the internet, and it can be produced by anyone in the world. And so there are thousands and thousands of images of Pepe ranging from a glorified emoji to the most horrifying scatological images you can imagine. Because Pepe has become this chaotic, fluid, shape-shifting thing, he ends up acting like a mirror, in the same way water acts as a mirror. And the way that works is that because there are so many images of Pepe, when people look into that huge chaos of images, they can't encompass it, all of it. They have to mentally order it. And in ordering it, they do that using their own mental patterns. That is, they project their thinking into this chaos. And as they force the chaos to take shape, it becomes an image of their own ideas, maybe their own ideological possession. And so one of the things that has been happening is that some people on the right, what, what some groups are calling the alt-right or, or whatever, have been using this effect to act as a mirror against the social justice warrior types. It even went so far that the SJWs finally declared Pepe a hate symbol. The Anti-Defamation League said that Pepe was a hate symbol. I mean, this frog, this cartoon frog, it was so ridiculous that the ADL finally scaled back some of the language they use. I mean, of course it was politically motivated, but how could such a silly thing happen? Well, certain images of Pepe, a few of them in the thousands and thousands of images available, had racist themes. And so there was a Hitler Pepe and a KKK Pepe, a scheming Jew, African stereotypes using racist slurs, cliche Mexicans. All of these examples were floating with the other thousands and thousands of Pepe images online. But when the social justice warriors looked in this mirror, this pond of Pepe images, all they could see were the ones that reflected back to them their own ideology. Or rather like a mirror, an inversion the dark shadow of their ideology. Of course, immediately the uh, accusation came. Pepe is a racist symbol. He's a hate image. And the irony is very big because, first of all, no one controls this image. No one has any control over it. Pepe is everything and anything and nothing at the same time. By declaring publicly that he's a hate symbol, the SJWs are pointing to their own absurdity, and this to the delight of those that use this image. But hiding in this is an even larger irony. If you look at the images that they pulled out as being racist images, there's this strange contradiction in them. You see on one side there's Hitler Pepe, and KKK Pepe, and there's a Trump Pepe, well, on the other side, there's the scheming Jew, the African-American, and the Mexican. This means that Pepe is at the same time the archetypal oppressor seen from the side of the victim, 
all the while being the archetypal scapegoat, seen from the side of the oppressor. That is, Pepe is both sides of racism at the same time. When the SJWs look at that, automatically, without even thinking, they organize it through the ideology. And it exposes their program because they automatically decide that when Pepe is Hitler or KKK or Trump, Pepe is identifying with those people. But when he's a scheming Jew or a Mexican, Pepe is mocking and criticizing those people. Why is such an absurd image of Hitler as a cartoon frog not seen as mocking Hitler? In fact, all the SJWs are seeing is a reflection of themselves, of their nightmare, of their shadow. The rather pathological desire we've seen in the past few months to accuse everyone of being Hitler or a neo-Nazi or a white nationalist is an expression of their secret desire. The desire to be confirmed through an encounter with their projected other. And it's funny because the discourse of otherness has been an ideological tool of the left since the 1960s. And now we're at a time when it has come back to haunt them. So by using this strategy, the people who have been wielding this Pepe image have taken advantage of the power of chaos, taken advantage of what happens when the frog jumps into the pond and goes down to the bottom to find the golden ball. As I explained in my interview with Dr. Peterson about the story of the princess and the frog. But the frog can't stay in the water forever. And that's the most important thing. At some point, you have to finish the story. To finish the story, the frog has to get the golden ball. And one could say that the golden ball is actually the sun, which will come up for the new day. The frog has to get the golden ball and bring it back to the surface of the water. It must carry the most important thing, carry the seed of the new world to the princess so that it can grow. If that doesn't happen, there is no telling what else can come out of the water. If the frog stays there for too long, it will be eaten or it will call some darker monster because there are other things down there beside the golden ball and the frog can tempt the leviathan to devour it. And it's not as if this is impossible. As the frog swims in the darkness, the social justice warrior is still peering into the mirror and calling forth its shadow. We've already seen some intimations that this game people are playing might raise something more than a new day, might raise the very monster the social justice warriors hope to encounter. So as the frog swims in the water, how, how can it do that? How can it recognize the golden ball that is at the bottom of the pond? Because it's actually not easy to distinguish things when we're covered in darkness. And the answer to this is in what happens in the story. The frog has to get out of the water and become a prince. The frog has to become something else. And bringing up the golden ball is the same thing as the transformation of the frog into a prince. One cannot happen without the other. And so as Dr. Peterson has often suggested in his lectures, the way to do it is to sort ourselves out, is to go into our own self and to find the golden ball that is hidden in the darkness to go down and find the most important thing of Western civilization. And Dr. Peterson has suggested the most important thing of Western civilization is the Logos. It is truth. It is the Word. We have seen how noise has been the chaos used to drown the Word. 
What I'm going to talk about is freedom of speech, and I, I want to tell you a few things about freedom of speech, okay? Because I've been thinking about this very carefully. I've been thinking about this very carefully over the last two weeks. And it's partly because of the videos that I've made. And so we must find the word. For it is the sun that rises after darkness. The word is the thing that comes out of death and lives again.